What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video guys, I'm going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played Sofia in the semi-final of the Europa League guys. Yes guys, the dream is over. We're out of Europe, we're out of the Europa League, but what can we do? Anyway guys, before I start today's video, a good 77% of you guys are not subscribed to my channel, so please go down there, subscribe to my channel. I'm on the way to 150 subscribers by the end of this year. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, go down there, subscribe to my channel. What are you doing, guys? There's some quality content coming out over the next couple of videos. So look out for that, guys. Anyway, guys, let's just get on straight to today's video. So we made two changes from our last game against FC Copenhagen. Talking about the starting 11, so we started with De Gea, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Williams, Pogba, Fred, Greenwood, Fernandez, Rashford and Martial. Get into the overall reaction now. The defence is shocking. Man United crash out of the Europa League semi-finals. That's another semi-final we fucked up. United simply can't get past the semi-finals. Sevilla don't deserve that. Substitutions came on too late. Referee was a joke. He bottled it as well. We were good enough to score a goal, but we didn't take our chances. Oh well, it is what it is. We move on. Right, so before I start today's video, I just want to say well done to Sevilla. They smashed it, they beat us. They did not deserve to, to get to the final. What did they do to work for that second goal? They did absolutely nothing. In that second half, Manchester United were by far the better team. The better team lost. Rio Ferdinand tweeted last night and he said, if you can't put your chances away, you'll get punished. And if you can't defend properly, you get punished. Now, I want to start on this defence. That is the worst defending I have seen in a long, long time by Manchester United. I just want to say, that's the worst I've seen Brandon Williams play. People go on about Brandon Williams. He should be starting, getting more starts and stuff like that. That goes to show of how much we are missing Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is a better left back than Brandon Williams, without a doubt. After that shit show that I watched last night, Brandon Williams is not finished. He's just not good enough for this level right now. He's not the man to be playing in Europe. I know Luke Shaw's injured, but who is Luke Shaw's backup? We need a second left back if Luke Shaw is injured. The second left back for Luke Shaw is Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams is a right footed left back. Luke Shaw is a left footed left back. We don't have a backup left footed left back. We've got a backup, but he's right footed as a left back. So it's not good enough. Firstly, I just want to say United. We deserve to win that game, but we got our pants pulled down. We got what we deserved at the end of the day. The referee was a joke. We had fucked up another semi-finals. That's the third semi-final that we've got knocked out of. Like Owen R. Greve said, he said, you know, it's been a good season for Manchester United. But again, we've bottled another semi-final. We think that out of those three semi-finals, you'd at least get to a final. I know the Carabao Cup one was out of the window. Damage was done in the first leg. Should have been going through the final of the FA Cup. Bottled that because of the team selection. But the team selection was right in this one. It was down to the defending. I'm going to slaughter right now those centre-backs. Maguire, you are not a leader, mate. You simply are not a leader now. It just goes to show that you cannot be the captain of Manchester United. Everyone saw that last night with Bruno Fernandes, Bollock and Lindelof. But you know what? People were having a go at Lindelof, Maguire for the goals. You've got to look at that back line. Firstly... The first goal came from the right-hand side, so wan Saka should have been doing better in the first place. It goes on about that I don't let players pass me, I don't like getting beaten. The man got beaten, so it's not good enough. The defence was absolutely abysmal, absolutely poor. I'm absolutely fuming with that defence. We should have been doing better. Defensively, as a unit, shambles at the back. The whole defensive line was a mess, absolutely a mess. We're not organised at the back, there was no unity. We're out of position. The defence is a joke. How can you say that that was good defending last night? We conceded two goals down to our shite defence. What a joke. What an absolute joke that was. And with the second goal, goes to show that with Brandon, not experienced enough. We don't have a backup for Luke Shaw. The backup is Brandon Williams. Who's the backup for Brandon Williams? We don't have a clue. So it goes to show that we need to get another left back as well for Luke Shaw when he's injured. And it goes to show that we need another centre-back now because we can't defend properly. And that defending was just abysmal. This is a message to our fan base. Do not only just blame Harry Maguire and Lindelof for those two goals. Look at wan for the first goal. Where was he? And what happened in the second goal? It was Brandon's fault. Not only just Brandon's fault, but look at Maguire. Look at Lindelof. 
they should have been doing miles better as well. You can't just blame it on one player, unfortunately. You've got to blame it on the, on all of the defenders. We're not good enough defensively. I'm sick and tired of this defence. Got to sort it out. Ollie's got to sort out that defence. That can't be carrying on. Not good enough. Not good enough. I'm annoyed. I'm really annoyed. I'm, I'm pissed off. The goals that we conceded were so they could have been avoidable. You know, De Gea once again getting beat at near post. Once again, just not up to it. Once again, De Gea. And then De Gea couldn't do anything with the second goal. But again, shit defending. And we get our pants pulled down. Crap defending that we did. I said turn up. Some of the players turned up. The rest didn't. I'm disgusted. Absolutely disgusted with that performance. What did I make of the performance? Performance on the whole was... I think it was a good performance. I'm not going to blame the performance. First half performance, you know, we had a good start to the game. I think it was a good start to the game. It was the dream start that we wanted. I think it was all about get the first goal. And that's what everyone would have been thinking. Let's get the first goal and then we'll be talking then. And then we got the first goal. We were making sloppy mistakes, sloppy errors given possession away. The more mistakes we kept on making, it just goes to show Sevilla were good on the counter-attack and they just took the chances. We simply didn't. That goes to show Sevilla got back into the game and they reacted well and then they got the goals and then that gave them confidence. And then going into the break, the first half overall, it was both-sided, fair. And then in the second half, you're thinking, right, come on, let's finish this game off. Quick, incisive football now. Let's play with energy. Let's play with intent. Let's play with high intensity, high tempo, which we did. Let's get the ball out wide. Let's make some good runs in from behind. Let's get some low and hard crosses into the box, which we did. We did all that good stuff. We had so many chances on goal. Simply couldn't take them. Couldn't take our chances. We got punished and we got our pants pulled down. And then I just knew it. It was written in the stars. I thought if we don't score, they're going to score a goal. And I knew it. I could read what was going to happen. We were going to hunt for a goal. Couldn't find the goal. And they were going to score the goal. So I'm not surprised really. And that's down to poor defending. We got punished because we couldn't take our chances. And we got punished because of our shite defending. I think it was not a bad performance. I think we played well. And the better team lost. What more can I say? I mean, we fucked up another semi-final. I need to slaughter Ali Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, why do you wait for the substitutions to come on after 87 minutes of the game? What a joke. Why do you wait to the 87th minute to make substitutions? Make them at the 60th minute. If we would have made them 60th, 65th minute, we would have been... If we would have got a goal, we would have been laughing. But he waited until the 87th minute. He waited until we were behind in the game. And I don't think Oli wanted to win this game either. I mean, the referee was a joke. Some of the calls that he was doing, abysmal, were laughable as well. I mean, even Oli Gunnar Solskjaer had to, had to have a, a word with him as well after the game. Because Oli, Oli was confused as well with some of his calls. And Sevilla didn't deserve to go through. I think the better team lost. But we simply couldn't take our chances. That's what happened to us. We've got our pants pulled down. We're not through to the finals now. Uh, what can we do? I don't have much more to say. That's the third semi-final defeat this season. First the Carabao Cup, second the FA Cup, and the last but not least, the Europa League. Why has that happened to us, and what is that down to? A couple of things for me. I think with the Carabao Cup, it was simply because wrong team selection. Obviously, Phil Jones came in for Maguire because Maguire was injured. We made a couple of changes in personnel, so the team selection was wrong. We got slaughtered 3-0. It was done and dusted in the first leg. We went into the second leg to Etihad. We scored, but we lost on aggregate. Wasn't it enough? The Carabao Cup was down to team selection once again. Wrong team selection. The defence was awful once again. In every single semi-final, we've got something in common, and that's the defence. In every single semi-final, the defence has let us down. That defence needs to be sorted out in the summer. I said that in my Q&A that we didn't need a centre-back. goes to show that now we need a centre-back, and we need a left-footed centre-back. Lindelof, mate, you're out of this club. Unfortunately, that goes to show that you were not up to it last night, nor was Maguire as well. Maguire was the, the captain last night. He was the leader. What does he do and what does he bring to the club? All the players need to look at themselves after that. I'm still hurting from that. I'm upset as well. We just didn't have the desire to win the game in the end. and Not good enough. The mentality could be there as well. Not the right mentality. It just goes to show that we've got something in common. And that's the defence. The defence in every single semi-final we've got to. It's let us down. Not good enough from the players. Not good enough. So we have pretty much put two crosses in. One from the right, one from the left. And scored two easy tap-ins. 
what needs to be done with the defence in the summer. It's clear now. It's clear now that Edward Wood needs to make some signings now. We've all been going on about the Sancho deal. I think that's dead in the water now. I think we need to start looking at alternatives. I mean, what needs to be done now with the defence is... I think it's clear that we need another centre-back now. Not only just a centre-back, another left-back as well. Goes to show that Brandon's not experienced enough. He's not a left-footed left-back, he's a right-footed left-back. We're not finished in terms of transfers. We still need to get another centre-back, another left-back. We need a right-winger. We need, I think, another midfielder. So we need another four signings. I don't think we're going to get four signings. I think the maximum we're going to probably get is probably two out of this window so far. Because the way out so far, I think it's like, what is it, seven, six weeks to go now of the window. Not made a signing yet. And that's a message to the board now. Make some signings now. It's time to make some signings, unfortunately. And we need to get them done. Done and dusted in a matter of weeks. Go to show that we're not there yet. And Oli needs the squad depth. He's put a message that I need the squad depth. And there you go. He needs it, obviously. Oli's making some changes in the 87th minute or 86th minute. Do I think that shows a lack of strength in depth? And, the, and does that have someone on the bench he can rely on and say, OK, I'm going to bring him on. To, to change the game, do I think that's what it is, or do, do I think it's just the case of him trusting his strike force too much? What do I think that is? What it is is, for me, I think he relies too much on his strike force. He has the trust and belief in the likes of Greenwood, Martial and Rashford. And we've seen that, you know, the last couple of weeks, Rashford, I mean, Rashford needs to sort himself out. But, I mean, he relies too much on the strike force. But then what has happened is as well if we've gone behind in games or we get ourselves in front we're on that mental edge like thinking what do we need to do now and ollie's thinking as well what do i need to do if ollie is behind in the game what does he do obviously he's going to look at his bench who am i going to bring on you think of the attacking players the likes of dan james igalo but some of these players also even coming off the bench are not been doing that great either massa did come off the bench against copenhagen and he made an impact you know he got us the penalty to get us through to the semi-final but again i think it's also he trusts and believes in his strike force but then at the same time, we don't have that one player that can change the game for us in the second half. We may have it sometimes. It's also about turning up to games. And if players don't turn up to a semi-final or a final, no matter what it is, you're not going to win the game. At the end of the day, Ollie's waiting until the 87th minute to make changes. I mean, that's a joke. We go behind in the, I think it was... 13 minutes to go and then he brings on substitution with about three minutes to go why wait 10 minutes we're not going to change the game in a matter of 10 minutes are we with that team you need to look at your bench straight away i need to bring on some substitutions bring them on earlier fergie brought his substitutions on in the 60th minute he needs to start doing that he needs to start doing that and he needs to learn i think it's pointless as well overall united finished third and qualified for champions league for next season has it been a good season? Yeah, I think it's been a good season overall. United had to prove people wrong. People were, you know, predicting United to finish fifth or sixth. We finished third. We always qualified for Champions League for next season. No one would have thought that. It's been a good season. Obviously, we got to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup and the Europa League. We shouldn't be getting to these semi-finals and losing them. But that's not the mentality. The mentality is win trophies. If you want to win trophies, start winning the semi-finals and it also can be down to the mentality as well if you don't get the right mentality on the day you're not going to win the game and if you saw a couple of times with ollie in last night's game he said don't let them get inside your head as well it goes to show and i mean it's been a good season you shouldn't be getting knocked out in three semi-finals you should be at least getting through to at least one of the finals i mean Carabao cup it was out of it because at the end of the day the damage was done in the first leg fa cup fucked about with the team selection and this one he didn't fuck about with the team selection he just made a few minor tweaks he wanted to be more flexible against this severe side i mean we still lost the game if you can't take your chances you get punished and if you can't defend you're going to get punished that's what happens i think it's been a good season but how can you get to three semi-finals and lose every single one we should have been better in the europa league not only just the players but the manager as well was putting their eggs in one basket going for the europa league and that's what can happen and that's what happened to Arsenal. And they ended up sacking their manager midway through 
last season as well. Do I believe in Oli is the right man for the job? There's been question marks here and there, but do I think long term Oli Gunnar Solskjaer can get the success as we United fans are used to and we want to see back at this club? I mean, if you ask me, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is the, he's the right man for the job. I mean, you've got to back him now, and the board have got to back him massively. Woodward's got to even back him now, and I mean, Woodward has to back him. This is the thing, he needs the signings this summer. If he does not get the signings this summer, he's going to be scratching his head and we're not going to be challenging for next season. So he needs at least two or three signings and then hopefully dip in the transfer one and we should be done. So it's like, if we get the signings in this summer, we're pretty much done and dusted. If we don't get the signings, it's probably going to be another two transfers. But in terms of long term, I think in five years he might be good. But if you're looking like in the next ten years, probably not, no. I mean, you could be setting all these targets... If you don't get to it, there's only one thing that Woodward's going to do, and that's going to sack him, isn't it? He's got to be back now, and he's got to get the signings that he needs to get. Who stood out in the game? Now, I don't think De Gea stepped up to a mark, nor did Wambasaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Williams. They were all not good for me. I think Pogba was good. I think Bruno was good. I think Martial was good. Greenwood was good. So there were some good players, the likes of Bruno, Pogba, Greenwood, Martial, that were good. But Rashford wasn't good again. Fred was okay, but the others were dreadful. We're not good enough. Who stood out in the game? Pogba, Bruno, Greenwood, Martial for me. Getting into the goals now. First goal, Bruno steps up and scores a nice composed penalty for 1-0. Getting into the stats now. Possession for Sevilla, it was 53.1%. And for Man United, it was 46.9%. Goals for Sevilla, it was 2. And for Man United, it was 1. Total shots for Sevilla, it was 9. And for Man United, it was 20. Shots on target for Sevilla it was 3 and for Man United it was 7. Shot accuracy for Sevilla it was 33.3% and for Man United it was 35%. Shots inside the box for Sevilla it was 6 and for Man United it was 13. Shots outside the box for Sevilla it was 3 and for Man United it was 7. Total passes for Sevilla it was 527 and for Man United it was 462. Pass accuracy for Sevilla it was 86.3% and for Man United it was 84.6%. Williams went off a fossil man to talk about Brandon's performance. Found wanting for Suso's equaliser and Sevilla targeted him all night long after Copenhagen had some joy. Winning goal came from his side. Williams wasn't good enough for me. Wamba Saka went off a Dan James to talk about Aaron's performance. Blame her for De Jong's winner and needs to watch some videos of Joshua Kimmich and Trent Alexander-Arnold regretting as a, an attacking fullback. Rashford went off a matter to talk about Rashford's performance. Won the penalty and stung Yassin Basuno's palms with a knuckle ball free kick faded and was lucky to stay on as long as he did. Greenwood went off for a goal and talk about Greenwood's performance. Got into dangerous areas often and had a great chance to make it 2-1 just after the restart but was denied a harsh lesson. Anyway guys, thank you for tuning in and thank you for the support during the whole of United's UEFA Europa League road. We're falling short. The better team lost. I mean, if you can't take your chances, you get punished and if you can't defend well, you get punished. So all in all, in the UEFA Europa League, the 2019-20 season has not been good. Performance was good and the better team lost. There's still a lot from this team. I mean, there's still a bright future for this team. It is what it is. We're falling short. We're not in the finals. We're going to have to improve now. Gutted that we're not in the final, but we've fallen short. Better team lost. What can I say? Can't say much more now. I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the support on this series, guys. We'll be back for the UEFA Champions League, which United are now qualified for for next season. So I'm looking forward to that. I hope you guys are enjoying our video. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. See you guys in the video the next couple of days. And peace. Uh -huh.